Now we go to Fairfax, Virginia, where yet another, another unarmed black person uh, was killed. Uh, this time they were shot, they were tased to death, uh, literally. It's Natasha McKenna. And uh, she has the unfortunate double whammy of being African American uh, and having uh, some mental difficulties. Uh, she was diagnosed with schizophrenia at the age of 12, and she was having an episode. And uh, we've shown you studies in the past that show in America that in cities, the people who are most likely to be shot uh, by cops, overwhelmingly so, are African Americans. Outside of the cities, the people who are most likely to be shot are actually people with mental issues. If they, uh, uh, the cops in most parts of the of the country are not adequately trained, which is amazing. Uh, and if a person is acting up because of their mental uh, capacity issues, in fact, sometimes, oftentimes, the cops will get called in because they'll say, "Hey, look." This person is having an issue here. Come help us. It'll be family members a lot of times or neighbors that'll call them in. And the cops will come in and just shoot them, right? Now in this case she didn't get shot, she got tasted to death like I said, but it gets worse. Turns out they had already subdued her. Now, she didn't want to bend her legs in the as I'll explain in the story because they were going to put her in a chair. But they already handcuffed her, they'd already tied her up, and they tased her four times anyway. So let's tell you the full story. Visibly unstable, the Blue Nation Review says. According to police reports, the 37-year-old woman continued to resist arrest and allegedly punched and tried to bite an officer. So now look, at that moment, uh, she's had previous run-ins with cops, but maybe the cops on the scene don't know that, right? And she's biting them and punching them, uh, they're pissed. No problem, I, I understand that, right? And they, again, might not know her background, and she's resisting arrest, but the thing is, the tasing didn't happen then. They actually subdued her, they brought her in. In fact, the tasing happened when they were going to transfer her to a, another prison. Okay, So at that point, she's completely subdued. In fact, she was placed in a, quote, hobble restraint device so she could not run away again and a spit sock to keep her from biting anyone. And at this point, they know her history. She's been there for a, a while in their jail. They, part of the reason is they want to get rid of her because she continues to have issues. She urinated and defecated inside the jail cell. They had to bring in with people with biohazard suits. And, and at this point, they've already researched it. They know she's schizophrenic. So, in fact, six officers in full biohazard suits then placed McKenna into full restraints. So they know she's got these mental problems. They come in with the biohazard suits. They've got her completely restrained. But she doesn't listen to every order that they give her. Oh boy. Of course, you know, biggest crime in America, disrespecting a police officer. Now, I don't know if that guy thought he was being disrespected by this person who's clearly having some sort of episode. Here, let me tell you some of the background on this so you understand it better. McKenna, shackled at the hands and legs, wouldn't bend her knees to be placed into a chair, so an officer shocked her four times with 50,000 volts. Now, Washington Post explains that numerous experts said the use of a stun gun on a fully restrained prisoner was an unreasonable use of force, particularly in a jail setting where a person is unlikely to flee. Such a great point. Where is she going to go? It's going to take you a little longer to bend her knees. If you didn't tase her, I'm sympathetic to you. I mean, I wouldn't want to try to control her. Being a cop is a hard job. I mean, they're in the hazard suits because, you know, you don't know. She might go to the bathroom on you. She, th this is not a pleasant experience for anybody. We get that. Now, are we going to have an issue because they punched her in the knee? I know they're trying to get her to bend her knee. We're not going to have an issue over that, okay? But he tased her once uh, up close. Then he fires the tasers at her, uh, and that doesn't work. And then he tased her uh, a third time, and then a fourth time. And that's when uh, her health problems begin. Now look, this is also very important. Washington Post also explained. They said the tasers are not recommended, the experts say this, for use on the mentally ill, that even the taser manufacturer warns against using them on people in a state of excited delirium, and that using a stun gun more than three times is thought to be above the threshold for use on a single person. Now in this case, she's restrained, she's having these mental issues, uh, she's not, clearly not going to run away to any uh, place, and they stunned her beyond the recommended uh, usage. And at that point, uh, she loses her breath. Uh, they try to res resuscitate her. Uh, they go back and forth uh, several times, but they can't, and she dies. 
we've got to train our cops better. In the case of shootings, uh, I think the principal problem is cops are told, don't ever take a risk with your life, okay? Not a 1% risk, not a 0.1% risk. If you think they're looking at you funny and they're looking towards their waistband, just shoot them dead and be done with it. And we've seen in cases like the Tamir Rice case, uh, they shoot a 12-year-old within two seconds flat. That is literal, okay? Now, in the case of the tasing and the abuse uh, that goes on, I think we don't have proper treatment, uh, training, I should say, of how to treat the mentally ill in this country by cops. In the places where we do have training, for example, in San Antonio, Brave New Films did a great report on that, they actually respond much better. The amount of times they abuse the mentally ill are much, much lower than the national averages. But what are we doing? Why aren't we training the cops? Hey, some percentage of people you deal with will be mentally ill. And here is the protocol for dealing with that. For example, don't tase them. It doesn't affect them because they're in a state of delirium. It doesn't affect them. All you're doing is risking a chance that they're going to be seriously harmed, or in this case, killed, and it doesn't help your cause at all. How are we going to deal with this? Maybe you bring in uh, a, a, a trained psychiatrist uh, to help you. Now, if you're out in the streets and you're trying to restrain her the first time around, you don't, I get it. You don't have the luxury of bringing in a therapist at that point, right? But she's sitting in your jail for days and days. When you're going to move her and you know that she's been having issues, maybe you bring in a professional to help you with this. And maybe it doesn't take 20 minutes. Maybe it takes two hours. That's a giant pain in your ass. I got it. But that's how long it's going to take. Otherwise, you risk killing her, which is exactly what happened. But the overall problem runs through all of these cases. They don't take that time. They haven't done the training because they don't care that much. What difference is it to them if she passes away? She's not an important person. 